given question for air standard dual cycle compression ratio is equal to 10 at the beginning of compression pressure is equal to 1 bar temperature is equal to 27 degrees celsius maximum pressure is equal to 42 bar maximum temperature is equal to 1499 degree celsius find the temperature at the end of expansion cutoff ratio work done per kilogram of air cycle efficiency cp is equal to 1.004 kilojoule per kilogram kelvin cv is equal to 0.717 kilojoule per kilogram kelvin for air Let us understand given data with the help of pressure volume diagram of the dual cycle. Compression ratio is given. So this compression ratio is due to the process 1 to 2 where the isentropic compression is taking place. And this ratio is known as V1 by V2. So its notation is R and compression ratio R is equal to 10. So we can say that it is equal to V1 by V2. At the beginning of compression, pressure is given as well as temperature is also given. So process 1 to 2 is the compression process and at the beginning that means at point 1 pressure P1 is 1 bar. So standard unit is Newton per meter square so which is equal to 1 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. Temperature T1 is given 27 degree Celsius but for the calculation we have to convert it into Kelvin that is 27 plus 273 which is equal to 300 Kelvin. Maximum pressure is given. Now if we observe this pressure volume diagram, maximum pressure is at point 3 and at point 4. So we can say that maximum pressure P3 or P4 is equal to 42 bar. Maximum temperature. Now if we observe temperature entropy diagram of the dual cycle then maximum temperature is the temperature at point 4. So T4 is equal to 1499 degree Celsius. So 1499 plus 273, 1772, 1772 Kelvin. So we have to convert this temperature in Kelvin. Now value of Cp that is the specific heat at constant pressure is given. Value of Cv specific heat at constant volume is also given. And we have to find out work done per kilogram. Then the efficiency of this dual cycle temperature at the end of expansion. Now if we observe this diagram 1 to 2 isentropic compression, 2 to 3 heat addition at constant volume, 3 to 4 heat addition at constant pressure and 4 to 5 is the isentropic expansion process and at the end so starting point is 4 and end point is 5 so temperature at the end of expansion that means we have to find out this T5 now we will move to the calculation if we observe compression ratio is given that is V1 by V2 so V1 by V2 is equal to R therefore V1 is equal to R V2. Now V2 is known as Vc that is the clearance volume. So V2 is equal to Vc. Now how to calculate the swept volume. So swept volume Vs is equal to V1 minus V2. So we will write here. Now we will put the value of V1 in terms of R V2 that is R V2 minus V2 that is V2 R minus 1. So V2 is equal to Vc. So this is the relation in between Vs and Vc. So Vs is equal to Vc R minus 1. So R is equal to 10. So Vs is equal to Vc 9 or we can say that Vs is equal to 9 Vc. So I will write here the relation therefore Vs is equal to 9 Vc. So this is the relation in between swept volume and clearance volume. We can find out from this compression ratio R. Now how to calculate the gamma? So gamma is Cp by Cv. So we will calculate this Cp divided by Cv. Then we will get value of gamma is equal to 1.4. Now we will move to the process 1 to 2. So at this process 1 to 2, 
temperature and pressure at point 1 t1 and p1 is given but t2 and p2 is not given so we will calculate with the reference of this process 1 to 2 so t2 by t1 is equal to v1 by v2 raised to gamma minus 1 where v1 by v2 is known as r so r raised to gamma minus 1 that is 10 raised to 0 0.4 is equal to 2.51 so t2 is equal to now we have to take this t1 in kelvin so 2.51 into 300 753.56 kelvin now we will calculate pressure p2 so p2 by p1 is equal to v1 by v2 raised to gamma so why to take v1 by v2 because we know the ratio v1 by v2 as r so r raised to gamma is 25.1 so, P2 is equal to, now for the calculation, we have to take P1 in Newton per meter square. So, it is 25 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. Now, we will move to the process 2 to 3. So, if we observe, this is the heat addition at constant volume. T3 by T2 is equal to P3 by P2. So, this is the relation in between temperature and pressure. Now we know the value of P3 as well as value of P2 because P3 is mentioned in the question that is the maximum pressure which is 42 bar. So P2 we will also take in the bar that is 25.12 that we have calculated so which is equal to 1.67. Now T2 we have calculated and we have to consider this value in Kelvin. So T3 is equal to 1.67 into T2 which is equal to 1258.5 Kelvin. So this is the temperature at point 3. Now we will find out the cut off ratio. So cut off ratio is equal to T4 by T3 and which is also equal to V4 by V3. So I will write here cut off ratio RC is equal to rc is equal to v4 by v3 so we can take here v4 by v3 or ratio of t4 by t3 now t4 by t3 because t4 is known and t3 we have calculated so from this we can calculate cut off ratio is 1.4 so it is also equal to v4 by v3 now we will move to the process 4 to 5 now question is we have to find out the temperature at the end of expansion that is at the point 5. Now we have the ratio T4 by T5 is equal to. So what is the relation in between temperature and volume? T4 by T5 is equal to V5 by V4 raised to gamma minus 1. Now we don't know what is the value of V5. So V5 value is not known. V4 value is also not known. But we have the relation that is in between V1 and V2 and V4 and V3. Now if we observe this V5 is equal to V1. So if I extend this line then V1 is equal to V5. And here V2 is equal to V3. So we will divide and multiply with V2. So if I divide and multiply V5 by V2 multiplied by V2 by V4. Now V5 instead of V5 I will use V1. So V1 by V2 is known as R. Now what about V2 and V4? So V2 and V4 but V2 is equal to V3. So if I take instead of V2 V3, V3 by V4 then here is the ratio in between V4 and V3 that is known as RC. So I will take V3 by V4. So if we observe V1 by V2 and here is V4 by V3. So if I transfer this term in the denominator then it will become V4 by V3 is equal to RC. So how we can write R divided by RC raised to gamma minus 1. So it is 0 0.4 and R is 10 and RC is 1.4. So which is equal to 2.19. Now we will say that T4 by T5 is equal to 2.19. So T5 is equal to T4 divided by 2.19. So T4 that is the maximum temperature is given. We have to take in Kelvin 1772 divided by 2.19. So T5 is equal to 809.1 Kelvin. We will calculate heat supplied per kilogram. If we observe this diagram, heat is added or supplied during the process 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. So 2 to 3 is with constant volume process. So how to find out this? 
सो वी हैव टू टेक द स्पेसिफिक हीट एट कॉन्स्टंट वॉल्यूम सी वी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस सो टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस इज टी थ्री माइनस टी टू सो सी वी टी थ्री माइनस टी टू प्लस नाउ नेक्स्ट प्रोसेस इज थ्री टू फोर विच इज एट कॉन्स्टंट प्रेशर सो सी पी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस टी फोर माइनस टी थ्री सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ डायग्राम वी विल राइट दिस फॉर्म्यूला नाउ वी विल पुट द वैल्यू सो वैल्यू ऑफ सी वी इज मेन्शन टी थ्री एंड टी टू वी हैव टू राइट टी फोर एंड टी थ्री वी हैव टू राइट इन द ब्रैकेट सो वी हैव टू फर्स्ट सॉल्व दिस ब्रैकेट एंड देन वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई विथ सी वी फॉर द नेक्स्ट टर्म वी हैव टू सॉल्व दिस ब्रैकेट एंड वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई विथ सी पी एंड देन वी हैव टू एड दिस टू टर्म सो फर्स्ट टर्म दिस इज द फर्स्ट टर्म सो फॉर द फर्स्ट टर्म द आंसर इज थ्री सिक्सटी टू एंड फॉर द सेकेंड टर्म आंसर इज फाइव फिफ्टीन पॉइंट फाइव सो हीट सप्लाइड पर किलोग्राम इज एट सेवनटी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव किलो जू नाउ हीट रिजेक्टेड पर किलोग्राम सो हीट इज रिजेक्टेड ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस फाइव टू वन सो दिस इज द प्रोसेस एट कॉन्स्टंट वॉल्यूम सो वी हैव टू टेक सी वी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस टी फाइव माइनस टी वन so we have to consider this so when we calculate we will get 365.02 kJ now how to calculate the work done per kilogram so it is heat supplied per kilogram minus heat rejected per kilogram so we have to subtract these two terms so it is 512.48 kJ so this is the answer now we will calculate the efficiency of the dual cycle so it is work done by heat supplied or heat added so work done is 512.48 divided by heat supplied is 877.5 so answer is 0.58 but the efficiency is always in percentage so we will multiply with 100 and it is equal to 58%